Oh my gosh. What is even happening? Did I get electrocuted? Oh my gosh. Why? Hello, my friend. Welcome to my favorite video of the month. It is favorites and fails countdown time. This is when I talk about the worst product that I tried this month. And then I count all the way up to the best product that I tried this month. I always try to throw in something that surprised me, that caught me off guard, that I'm really, really loving. And I have quite the variety of things to share with you today. So hang tight. We are about to jump into that right now. Before we get started, I always start my favorites and fails countdown with a hashtag not sponsored feature. The reason why I do this is because I am always getting emails from brands asking me to strategically place their product in the top of my favorites and fails countdown. And I think that is super weird. So a long time ago, I decided I was going to put something in here that is not makeup related that I think is awesome, uh, that I'm not being paid to tell you. Therefore, this week, we we're talking about something that I got on Amazon, which I don't think that I've ever talked about something that I got on Amazon because it always makes me feel a little, <laughs> there, you know, like it just makes me feel a little weird to talk about Amazon finds. I don't know. I know a lot of people do them. I know a lot of people don't mind them, but I don't know. It just, let me preface this also by saying that I'm very odd and I'm going to admit something to you that I think is very odd and very unusual in that I love going to the grocery store. <laughs> It's like one of my favorite places to go. I do my weekly trip to the grocery store for the family and I freaking love it. Like it's like a peaceful shopping experience for me. And one of the things I love to do at the grocery store is just sip on a cup of coffee while I peruse the aisles. I always go during off peak time so I don't have to worry about a lot of people around all of that. And one thing I always thought about is why don't shopping carts have cup holders? And then I thought to myself, can I buy a cup holder for my shopping cart? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> this is my shopping cart cup holder. I don't know why I chose this dusty shade of pink. It's honestly not my favorite, but it is functional and the function is what's important. So this was actually meant for a stroller. It's not even advertised for a shopping cart, but it does work. It's got the clamp down here and you just clamp that onto the edge of the shopping cart. You have your place for your coffee or whatever beverage. And then there's a little slot for your cell phone. And the way that I handle my grocery list is that I use the notes app and my husband and I, we share that note between our two iPhones and he can add things to the grocery list. And then he can see when I check things off, he can add things while I'm at the store and it's wonderful. It's fantastic. It works out very, very well. So what I do is as I'm shopping, I put my phone in here on with the grocery list up and I just lift it up and I tap, you know, check off the things as I'm buying it. And it's wonderful. It's fantastic. It brings me so much joy. It's the little things in life that can bring you joy. And this has been bringing me so much joy. And I will tell you that I've gotten more compliments about this than anything else I've ever brought to the grocery store, but it's never other customers. It's people that work at the grocery store. They will stop me and be like, that cup holder is amazing. <laughs> or like the person at the meat counter or the fish counter will be like, I love your cup holder. And it's like, thank you. Thank you for validating my need for something that is excessive, but yet brings me joy. But with that being said, I will link this and all the other products that I talked about down below in the video description in case you're interested in purchasing it. Enough about not makeup related. Let's get into some makeup. I think everything today, yes, I have no skincare. I have no hair care. Everything is makeup related today. So let's jump into number 10, the worst product that I tried this month. If you watch the worst rated products at Ulta video that I put out this month, you will not be surprised at number 10. It is this Stila lipstick. And this is the shade Butterfly Kiss in the Stay All Day Matte Lip Color. And I will tell you the best thing about this is the packaging. It is so beautiful. I love the gradient on there. It is gorgeous. Y'all know I'm a huge Stila fan. I'm rooting for them to come out with another hero product that I can love and kind of rally around and be like, yes, go Stila. This is, this is not new and it is not fabulous. It is just so dry 
and uncomfortable and it is dry and uncomfortable from the jump. Now, the people who reviewed this that didn't like it on the Ulta website also said it crumbled on their lips. That was not my experience, which is great uh, because crumbling lipstick is absolutely disgusting when that happens and it gets all in your mouth and it's like, Bleh. but that did not happen, thankfully. It was just incredibly uncomfortable. The wear down of it was not pretty, which is what I would expect. The only way I can even stomach using this product is by topping it with a lip gloss or a lip balm, which makes it, of course, very bearable because it takes away that matteness and it takes away the dryness and it, it makes it functional. So I am going to keep this and then just use it that way because I do think it is a very pretty color, but formula wise, it is absolutely awful in my opinion. Number nine is a product that I didn't hate. I just don't see a purpose in it. It's just not functional. This is from that video as well. This is the Revolution Pro Blur Stick Universal Face Primer. This, I don't know what this is supposed to do. I don't feel like it has any priming abilities. I don't feel like it does anything. Let me just swatch it on my arm for you. There's no mattness. It doesn't make anything matte. It just kind of goes on and then you can barely even feel like it just kind of blends in to the skin. Like I can't even feel that there's any kind of primer there. I didn't notice that it made my makeup last longer. Like it was hard to use to shape around different parts of the curves of my face, just the stick format. And you can't really put it on your fingers and then rub it in because by the time you put it on your fingers and then try to apply it, it's gone. It is so freaking weird. It's like the great disappearing primer. It there's, it has no purpose. It is it's not functional. The eighth product is a product that I was rooting for, that I really wanted to love. It has a positive element of it, but I just cannot with this product. I absolutely cannot. This was sent in PR from Too Faced. These are the new Lip Injection Extreme Lip Shapers. Let us start with the positive and the positive is the base formula of this is wonderful. It is very creamy, it is very smooth to go on, it blends out beautifully. I have issues with the packaging and also the feel of the product, we'll get into it. So the packaging wise, hmm, okay, there's a button at the back, which is very cute. You take the button and you push it, let me see if I can do it with one handed, let's do this way. It's kind of neat because you think about an injection, you want to like, you push, you know, the, the syringe or whatever, and it, you know, it's kind of injection-y. <laughs> and it pushes up just the tiniest bit when you do that. But the problem is, is it does not retract. So hopefully as I do this, I'm going to hold this in and try to push it closed, try to push it back in, see how it doesn't it won't go back in. So you have to be really careful how much you roll it up because if you roll it up too much, it's gonna hit the inside of the cap and it's gonna make a freaking mess. The initial application on this, because it is flat and not pointy, is a little awkward to put on until you can kind of whittle away and make it a point. So that's not a deal breaker, but it's just kind of a minor inconvenience as far as you know when you first start using it. But my biggest issue with this, because neither of those things are deal breakers for me, is the feel of this product. It is very lip injection-y. And if you've ever tried the Too Faced lip injection lip glosses, it's painful. It, they put spicy pepper extract into the formula and it takes about 30 minutes to go away. And the last time I used these is probably the last time I'm going to use them because what I did was I put on the lip liner. I just used the lip liner by itself, didn't top it with a lipstick, but then eventually it felt kind of dry. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to put a lip gloss on over top of this just to, so my lips are a little bit more comfortable because traditionally you put on a lip liner, you put a lipstick on over top of it. And I hadn't done that. So I put on this lip gloss and oh my gosh, the intense amount of burn that I felt on my lips, it was unbearable. I had to take it off. And this was not a Bernie lip gloss. This was just a regular like essence lip gloss. It was like nothing. And I just couldn't go through that. I felt like dry. It was fine. It was bearable, uncomfortable, not really fun, but bearable. But when I put that lip gloss on, it set me over the edge. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. And I just pulled it right off. I could not tolerate it. Some people though, some people enjoy that spicy feeling and really like that. And there is evidence that that spicy irritation on your lips does plump your lips. Um, but I just can't, I can't, I cannot physically take it. It is too much for me. It is too intense. So unfortunately these are going to be a no for me. 
Now these next products are ones that I have been enjoying to an extent, but I feel like they've got some flaws, some things that could be better. This is actually one of my favorite products that I tried this month, but it is so freaking weird. I cannot put it any higher than this. This is the Ulta Fiber Tint Brow Gel. I've been talking about this all last week because it has been an experience, my friend. There's a lot of things you need to know about this. First, that it was low rated at Ulta. I don't think it should be as low rated as it was, but we'll get into it. So the big complaint on the website is that this is so freaking flimsy and it really is. It feels cheap. It doesn't feel secure and it can, because it's so flimsy, it can lead to a lot of mess. The other thing is that the wand itself, besides being flimsy, is that it's very large. So figuring out how to put that into the brow functionally takes a little bit of practice. This is what I have learned after, let me show you the picture of the debacle that I had <laughs> putting this on with a brow pencil. I also had a debacle during live chat last weekend trying to show you this product. It, it's, it's taken a lot of practice, but I think I finally figured it out. And I think what you need to do, and I do have it in my brows today with a benefit brow pencil is all you do is you take it like this and go boop and then you move on you do not go in more than once in one spot you have to move on no matter what you have done you have to move on because you cannot cake this stuff on and then just slowly work your way it takes me about three brushes to get all the way through and then stop do not put on any more because it can get outrageous very, very quickly. The compliments I have on this is the pigmentation of the brow gel in here is wonderful and the hold is fantastic. It will hold my brows in this feathered brow look all freaking day. Absolutely fabulous. It's just so hard to work with and it took so much practice and it's so easy to mess up. I've had to redo my brows so many times with this product just in the past few weeks that I've owned it that I'm probably going to hesitate using it except for the fact that I really do like my brows. When they come out right, they come out good. And it's like, do I want to take that risk or not? Do I have time to redo them if I them up? <laughs> Well, you know, that's that's kind of whether I'll use this or not. I do think I'm going to use it again because honestly, I think my brows look pretty freaking amazing today and I never say that about my brows. Along those same lines of a product that's pretty good but could use some improvement, this is the ColourPop Cheek Dew Serum Blush purchased and PR both of all of the above for that one. The thing about these is you really just need to know what you're getting into as far as these. And I would be curious to know people that are deeper skin than me how much these show up on you because for me, I feel like it shows up enough. There it is at full strength. And then here it is blended a little bit and you can see it really does show up on me this one's probably a little bit orange for me just in general but it does show up on my skin tone now as far as blending it out you can over blend this and have it be completely pretty much gone there you go see how it like it's barely there now so you can blend it away to nothing but I feel like on the cheeks especially I feel like it only builds to so much and that it's hard to keep it like it's hard not to go too far with it as you're blending because it's like is it too pigmented is it not too pigmented I it's just a little bit difficult to work with as far as the pigmentation and getting it exactly where I want to I found that using my fingertips is the best way to have control over it I tried using a brush with it and I felt like the brush ate up too much of the product and made it so that it was really difficult to even get it to really show up on the skin so definitely the fingertips was my favorite way to apply it but it's just a weird cream blush formula like I feel like it just doesn't do the thing in a way that's easy to do. I have noticed with certain foundations that it does remove my foundation as well. So there are some really pretty colors of this. They're always coming out with new colors in different collections, limited edition collections and things like that. But I feel like the formula itself could use a little bit of improvement as far as the ease of use and then also not removing foundation. 
Right smack dab in the middle is the new Too Faced eyeshadow palette. This is the Italian Spritz palette. This is what I have on my eyes today, and I really enjoyed how this look came out. I played a lot in these pink or more pink shades, When in Rome and Mamma Mia. On my lid, I have Grappa Don't Preach <laughs> in my inner corner. I have Gelato, and I've used probably 80% of this palette on my eyes so far. The scent of it is very grapefruit and people have told me that this is based on a spritz kind of drink that is very popular and famous that I am not aware of because I don't go out and do those things like I used to 20 years ago. But supposedly it is a very good drink and that this is a great reference to that. I would say in the positives, most of the matte shades blend really, really nicely. I love the way Gelato is very opaque so that I can get a real nice brightening of my inner corner. I've also really enjoyed the lighter matte shades over here. This pink shade, this Mamma Mia shade is so difficult to work with. It is so difficult to blend. It is very pigmented and it just won't move. So I have to go in over and over and over again, back and forth, back and forth, over blending, putting more on, blending some more. It's patchy. I got this, this shade is really difficult. It's, it's a pain in the butt, to be honest. The other thing is that the foiled shades in here are extremely emollient. You can see here, the gold here on the side, how foiled that is. You can feel it in the pan. You can feel, you know, all of the emollients in there and it makes it so it gives a really nice foiled texture to the eye, but it also transfers really bad on me. I had to wait a little while, blend. Um, I had to reapply fly in the crease area just in the 30 minutes it took me to get ready to film and I know by the end of the night it's going to be pretty much gone in my crease these foiled shades which is kind of bland for me but if you don't have any kind of hooded eyes I have you know some hooding it's not completely hooded but some hooding of my eyes if you don't have that then you might be fine with this let me just swatch this gold shade on my hand real quick just so you can see I mean it's it's a very pretty pretty shade it's just it's it's a little too mushy gushy for me. Like it's almost on the edge of a cream shadow. The application is just freaking weird. The last thing I wanted to mention about this is just personal preference in that I do have to reach outside of this for a lighter shimmer shade. I have plenty of lighter shimmer shades. I don't, it, it's fine, but it would be, would have been nice to have a lighter shimmer shade in there. So in my inner corner from like, like here to the middle of my lid, I use this Essence uh, Rome palette. I use this shade right here for my inner corner and it played really nicely with this palette. If you haven't tried these Essence palettes, they're actually really, really good, especially for a drugstore price. So overall for Too Faced, not a knock out of the park, but it's not a bad palette. Moving into products that I am very much enjoying, let's talk about the Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet. And people have asked me, Jen, isn't this an old formula? No, this is a brand new formula, a similar packaging to what they used to have, but this is new. I have abandoned the sponge. I don't enjoy applying with a sponge. Let me show you the brush I've been using. This is by Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is the L34 brush. I find that this applies, like a dense brush like this, applies this product better than the the sponge here. I feel like it applies it more evenly. It just feels better to apply. It's easier to apply. One thing to keep in mind about this though is that on its own it's going to give you a light to medium coverage but you can't apply this over a lighter coverage foundation and it will give you a more medium to full coverage. It'll just kind of bump up whatever foundation you have to like one more level of coverage and it's just beautiful. It's all I have on my face today and it's just a beautiful beautiful powder foundation. It's rare that I enjoy enjoy a powder foundation because usually I find them to be quite lacking, but this one is very, very nice. I'm really enjoying it. I have been working on a ColourPop lip formula video for like three weeks and I want to give you a little bit of a preview of one of the formulas we'll be talking about. It is going to be a super geeky ingredient heavy video. It's going to be so much fun once I get all of it together. I do have one of every single lip formula that ColourPop makes. It's like 30 some lip formulas. It's nuts, but I think you're going to absolutely love that video. Here's a little preview of one of the formulas I've really been enjoying. This is the Fresh Kiss Lip formula and it is very moussey and whippy but it also dries down not in a super uncomfortable way but in a transfer proof way 
Let me show you. See, I've been wearing this for about an hour. It is still gorgeous. The lasting power is fantastic. It's matte, but it's not super uncomfortable. Now I did top it because I always top it. I, I just really enjoy that with the shade that I used from the Rome palette from Essence. So that's why it's a little shiny in the middle, but I'm not wearing any kind of gloss or anything. It's just a, a pretty matte formula. And I feel like those are a little harder to make because sometimes you end up with things like the Stila one if you make it too matte because you want to have that long lasting power but you want it to be bearable on lips and that's the way I feel like this formula is. Just two more products left. Let us talk about the Hindash new eye primer. This is called Canvas. And I was very hesitant about this because I find that the blushes that he released that are like this are extremely pigmented. It's like the opposite problem of the cheek dews in that it, it reminds me kind of of the Rare Beauty formula, the way that it started off where it's so pigmented, you have to blend so fast and it's just kind of difficult to work with in that way in that it is so incredibly pigmented. So I was a little nervous about this product because it is in the same packaging. So I kind of assumed that it would be that. And oh my gosh, this is such a great eye primer. I was very surprised. I hope they come out with different shades of it because I know not everybody is going to find the shade to be good for your skin tone. But this is what we've got going on. So it can be super opaque like that. And you can leave it like that if you want to, or you can blend it out and it just blends down to this beautiful powder finish. You can hear it the powder finish. It goes from a cream, just like a, a very soft feeling to the point where, you know, if you, if you set your eye primer with a powder, you don't need to do that with this. It's like it's built in there. You, you can just lay the shadows right over top of it. And the application is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really enjoying this. This is definitely one of my new favorite eye primers. I have quite a few primers that have been in my collection for a long time. The Ulta Eye Primer. I used to use Urban Decay's Primer Potion forever ago. I just haven't bought it in a long time. The Milani Eye Primer has been a recent favorite. This is just different. I feel like the end result is kind of the same. If you have an eye primer, you know how to use it. You find that it's doing great for you. Do you need this? No. But if you're looking for a new eye primer that you don't need to set. I feel like this is it, especially if you like one that will turn this color. Uh, for me, it mutes out discoloration. It just is going to kind of depend on what skin tone you are, how functional you'll find this particular color. Very pleasantly surprised at how much I am absolutely loving this. And then finally, at number one, da -da 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 -da. Okay, I am very skeptical of color switch products. I have never found them to be any better than just a plain washcloth. And we talked about this earlier last week, I think, is that usually I take a washcloth, I set it on my lap and I go with my brushes to switch out. And it's been fine, it's been fine, but sometimes it just doesn't get all the color off of the brush before I switch to another brush. And if I'm using, if the colors aren't next to each other, <laughs> I can mess up my entire look if I end up with like a dark color in the inner corner by accident and it's like what did I do this right here this was just sent to me by Sigma and I feel like this is just a standout stellar product a lot of the color switch types products are like a rough I don't know wiry almost like a kitchen sponge kind of texture this is very similar to their brush cleaning products but this is meant to use dry which I think is very very smart it has three different sections on here for eyeshadow, cream, and face powder, but then they were smart enough to make it on both sides. So if one side gets a little too gunky, you can flip it and use the other side in the same makeup application. And I freaking love that. That's so smart. And what's weird is I never thought to use one of their brush cleaning mats as a color switch. So I love that they're marketing it like that. I think that's very smart and it's just so functional. It works so well. Highly, highly recommend this. This is my new fave for cleaning brushes while I'm applying. And no one says you can't clean brushes wet with this either. You can use this as a multi-use product and use this to clean brushes underwater with however you clean your brushes. No one says you can't do that. At this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness, where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. As always, this is just my opinion. I have one face. I have one opinion. I have one set of preferences. But you, my friend, you are different than me. 
So I would love, if you know anything about these products, if you've ever tried these products, please leave your thoughts down in the comments down below so I can learn from you, the rest of the community can learn from you. And if you haven't tried any of these products, are you interested in them? Why, why not? And if none of that applies to you, what are some products that you've been trying recently that you really like, really don't like, and maybe they'll end up in a favorites and fails video in the future. Thank you again so, so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, if you could do me a favor and just hit that little thumbs up button, that would really, really help me out a lot. It tells YouTube to share it with more people so more people can enjoy the content that I am creating. And if you enjoyed the video so much that you'd like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right up here to watch, including one that I picked out for you special right down there. YouTube's gonna pick the top one for you based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go, absolutely no problem. I get it. You got stuff to do. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And I'd love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.